Hey guys, what's up? This is John from the Reaper blog. In this video, I'm going to show you how I set up my MIDI controller to control tracks in Reaper for when I'm mixing. So the controller I use is the Novation Nocturne 49. I don't think it's made anymore, but it comes with some really flexible software. If you have any modern keyboard, it probably has something similar to this to do your controller mapping. With that, you just have to link it to Reaper. So this controller has eight touch sensitive rotary encoders and eight assignable buttons. At the top left, I've got panning, and in this software, I have it set to a range of three points. So uh, I've linked that to Reaper here, set pan for last touch track. As an alternative, you could use uh, set pan for selected tracks. That will do all the selected tracks you have. In here, I've got this set to absolute. And uh, there's a lot of different options here, and different controls that you're manipulating might work better with the various other settings. The next knob is for the track width control, going from the default of 100% wide, got five positions, 50% mono, minus 50, and minus 100. Next to that, I have nothing assigned right now, and this one sets the track to be uh, trim read automation or touch automation. Going back a bit, uh, set stereo width and toggle track between touch and trim read. So the next knobs are send levels, adjust track send one volume, and I have this set to relative three. And in the controller, I have it set to increment, decrement. And then there's second send volume, third send volume, fourth send volume. All right, so going to the buttons, here I've got mute. Set mute for last touch track. I have this set on absolute and soft takeover mode. So if this button's lit up and the track is not muted, then I'll have to click it twice for it to unmute and then mute. Next one is solo, but I actually have it set as a momentary switch. So, uh, so like this Tom three track is selected. It only solos while I have the button pressed. Pretty cool, I think. The next one is float effects. So that's uh, toggle show all floating effects for selected track. Uh, I've got it on toggle. So hopefully your mapping software has options for the different button modes. So I press this. Um, I have to zoom out. It brought up the EQ. If I go to another track, if I click the master, there's all those. Pretty sweet to be able to show and hide those instantly. And then the last one is show all automation. So find shortcut. And again, it's just kind of standard. Got the set as a toggle. I'll zoom out so we can see this. Hide the mixer, and then I press this, and then all that auto all those automation lanes disappear. Press it again, they all come back. So that's a global thing rather than selected track. You could set it for selected track if you wanted. Then I have two buttons that are unused, and this one is actually a previous track. Select previous track and select next. So, previously I've shown tutorials on how to link the mod wheel to the selected track volume. I've also done a tutorial on using the BCF2000 control surface. I kind of use these things in different ways. So that I like for doing volume rides and stuff like that with that moving fader is great. Uh, this is a great way to set the pans, bring up your plugins, and uh, make track selections and show and hide the automation. It's great to be able to do that without the mouse. So I just use the mouse for selecting tracks usually, and then all my controllers jump to that track selection. All right, I'm going to close these. Actually, I'll leave this up in the corner. and bring up the mixer, go to the start of the song, and let's uh, do some stuff.
So that's the basics of this. The only other thing to show you is the send volumes. So I've got this track selected. I'll zoom in. I'm moving the controller and you can see you know, these three send levels go up and down as I turn the controller. The whole point of this was just to make you aware that these options are available. And if you have a MIDI controller in front of you, you're probably not using it other than for entering MIDI. If there's knobs and buttons that you can assign to things, start doing it and get hands on with your mix. Automation is a lot simpler when you have a controller to do it. Putting in the effort to do a little bit of controller mapping really pays off. So that's it for me. Thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Hope you can use this stuff. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video if you did. And check out reaperblog.net for more tutorials.